All right, students, I wanted to go over the first problem with you. This is kind of a longer problem, but it was built to be long because it's trying to guide you. If you were to follow it from the first question down to the last problem, it's trying to guide you how to do all steps of a limiting an excess reactant problem. So the problem says, consider the reaction between carbon and oxygen to form carbon dioxide, and then it gives you a chemical equation. If you, look, if you were to look closely at this equation, you would see that it's correctly written. We have our diatomic oxygen in there. Everything's balanced as well. Now, typically in a balanced reaction, we don't write coefficients that are ones, but I'm gonna write them in here because they're gonna be important later. And so I'm gonna write those coefficients. So first of all, we have a balanced reaction that's correctly written. And then it says, if three moles of carbon reacts with five moles of oxygen, and then we have a series of questions. So the first two questions are kind of at the heart of a limiting reactant problem. The idea is, is you have two reactants, right here we have carbon and oxygen, and the idea is, is there's different quantities. Now, if we could react those quantities separately and treat them as their own thing, if we could react all of the carbon, how much of our product could we get? Or if we could react all of our oxygen, how much of our product we can get. If we can answer questions A and B, it really lets us know which product is limiting and which product is X, or which reactant is limiting and which reactant is excess. So let's go ahead and get started doing that. So if we could react all three moles of carbon, how much carbon dioxide can we make? And so we're gonna start with three moles of carbon. And we need to figure out from those three moles of carbon, how much carbon dioxide we can make. So that comes back up to our reaction equation right up here. And our recipe says that we have one mole of carbon for every one mole of carbon dioxide. Well, that's really easy. If we had three moles of carbon, right away we, can, we know that we're gonna get three moles of carbon dioxide. But I just want to show you a little bit of the math that's involved behind this. What we're going to do is we're going to multiply that three moles of carbon by the ratio, the molar ratio of carbon to carbon dioxide. The molar ratio of carbon to carbon dioxide is one to one. And so we would take this three moles of carbon and we would multiply it by a ratio of one carbon dioxide to one carbon, making sure to put carbon on the bottom of this fraction. And that way the two carbons will cancel each other out. And so we're going to get our answer, which we kind of already figured out mentally, but this becomes a lot harder when we don't have whole numbers. Luckily, this problem gives us whole numbers, three and five, but if it was like 3.2 or 3.6, we might not be able to do those as easy, especially if the ratio is not one to one. <clears throat> All right, the, que the second question is, if you could react all five moles of oxygen, how much carbon dioxide could you get? So again, this is kind of a theoretical thought. If we could react all the oxygen, how much carbon dioxide could we get? So we're gonna follow that same process we did with question A, this time starting with five moles of oxygen. Well, what's the ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide? Well, it's the same as the ratio of carbon to carbon dioxide, it's one to one. And so I'm gonna multiply by my five moles of oxygen by the molar ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide, which in our chemical equation says it's one to one. Again, making sure I put oxygen on the bottom. So that's gonna give us our answer, which is five moles of carbon dioxide. All right, this is really important information. Again, theoretically, if we could use up all the carbon, we get three moles of carbon dioxide. If we could use up all the oxygen in a separate reaction, we'd get all five moles of carbon dioxide. So now let's put them together. Which one is limiting? Well, we can see right here that carbon is gonna get us less carbon dioxide. So our answer, carbon is our limiting reactant. So which ones are excess? Well, that automatically means that we're gonna end up with extra oxygen in the end. So oxygen is our excess reactant. And this is really important information to know. We're gonna, if we were to react both of them together, which is what we're gonna do, we're gonna use up all the carbon and we're gonna have extra oxygen. All right, so how much total carbon dioxide can be made based on the limiting reactant? Well, we already answered that question before. If we were to react both of these together, remember, carbon is going to run out. We're going to be left over with extra oxygen. But carbon, the most carbon is going to let us make is three moles of carbon dioxide. So we already solved this problem both in A and B. And we see that A is limiting or carbon is limiting. So we're going to end up with only three moles of carbon dioxide. All right, question F and G are related to one another. It says, if you could react all of your limiting 
how much excess would you need? So we know we're going to lose all of the carbon, but we're not going to lose all the oxygen. So how much oxygen is going to be left over? This is one of the more challenging problems for students. So I really recommend paying close attention to this. But what we're going to do is we know that we're going to use up all of our carbon. So that's kind of our standard. We're going to start with three moles of carbon. And the question is, if we can react all of that many moles of carbon, how much excess will we need in order to react at all? And so this is very similar to what we did up here, where we used carbon to try to find carbon dioxide. But this time we're going to use carbon, and we need to figure out how much oxygen we need. Well, here's our ratio. Our ratio is one to one, just like it was before. But this time we're comparing carbon to oxygen. So I'm going to take my carbon, and I'm going to multiply it by the ratio of carbon to oxygen, or my two reactants. Again, making sure carbon is on the bottom so it cancels out. That's going to let me know that in order to react all of my carbon, in order to react all of the carbon, I'm going to need three moles of oxygen. So three moles of oxygen will be needed to react all the moles of carbon. So question F is needed to be known in order to answer question G. It says, how much excess reactant will be left over in the end? And so we know that oxygen was our excess reactant. We also know from the problem that we're starting off with five moles of oxygen. So I'm going to put that five moles of oxygen there. That's how much we're starting with. Now, according to question F, we just learned that we're going to need only three moles of that oxygen. So we have five moles, but we're only going to use three moles of that. So I'm going to subtract three from that amount. That's going to give us our total answer of two moles. Oh, that's going to give us our total answer of two moles of oxygen. So we only need two moles of oxygen in this I'm sorry, we're going to be ending up. So we need three moles. We're going to, we had five moles. We're going to end up with two moles of oxygen left over in the end. All right, the last problem is, is more of a drawing. It's taking all this and putting it together in kind of a conceptual drawing. So here I have this drawing, and I'm going to go ahead and just use shapes to represent these different things. The first thing I'm going to do is start with three moles of carbon. Now, moles just represent a quantity. So I'm going to just use each of these particles to represent a mole of carbon. So here's a mole of carbon, here's a mole of carbon, and here's a mole of carbon. The next one is oxygen, and we have five moles of oxygen. And so here's my oxygen. Oxygen is a molecule of O2, so here's one mole of O2. Here's another mole of O2. Here's another mole of O2, so I have five moles of O2. Now these reactants are going to be mixed together in a reaction to create carbon dioxide. And so I'm going to go ahead and just use these, since this is kind of a simulation, I'm going to go ahead and just drag these reactants over to create product. And we'll see how this kind of works. So carbon dioxide is made of a carbon and two oxygens. So I'm going to go ahead and drag one of my carbons and, and an oxygen molecule over to create carbon dioxide. So there's one carbon dioxide that can be created, but we're not done. I'm going to keep creating them. So I'm going to drag another mole of carbon and another mole of oxygen and drag it over here to create another carbon dioxide. Again, I can do that one more time. Here's a carbon and two oxygens, and I can create carbon dioxide. And so here's our answer. Notice we can create, we can create three moles of carbon dioxide. We, we answered this previously. If you remember, our limiting was carbon. Because carbons are limiting, we can only create three moles of carbon dioxide. We also figured out our excess. We knew oxygen was our excess reactant. And look, there's two moles of oxygen left over in the end. And so the whole point of this was to kind of show you and bring it all together where this is all coming from. All right, good luck, guys. That's the answer to problem number one.